Hello and welcome to a training video on our trauma kit. This is our major first aid kit and uh, everybody in our search and rescue group needs to know what's in this kit and where it lives in this kit. Um, on task, if, uh, if, we have, if we have a first aid incident, the first aid attendant will be attending to the subject, but uh, he or she will definitely need somebody to give him some help um, by pulling things out of the kit and getting them ready for the first aid attendant. The first compartment that you go to when you open this kit up is in the lid. This is where we keep all of our office type stuff and our PPE. And as we know, PPE is the first thing you need to look after for yourself before you get into the subject. So we have some N95 masks. We have some uh, exam gloves, both uh, small and large. Uh, some earplugs and a couple pairs of eye protection are in here uh, and we have some heavy gloves which are uh, meant for cadaver or work or work if we're going to be um, again I get some abrasive type uh, objects and and if these ones aren't going to be strong enough you can go to those heavier gloves and of course we also have some hand a couple bottles of hand sanitizer in here as well and as, it, as I mentioned, we have some office type equipment in here. We have our soap notes in here, along with a pen uh, for writing with. So soap notes, and so as soon as the, cert, as the first aid attendant starts to uh, uh, give you some information, start writing it down. And also our field notes. First aid field notes are in here as well, along with, the, I say, the pen and a write in the rain book, so you have some extra notes. So all this stuff is located in the lid, and uh, when you first get to the subject, uh, let the first aiders start talking to the subject, you get this kit open right away, pass the first aider some sand gloves, if he or she hasn't already put them on, uh, quite often we get sort of quite involved in what we're doing and we might forget about some of those precautions, so if you could help us out with that as the assistant, and all those things are located in the lid. The next compartments are these two tube compartments on the outside, and this is where all of our oxygen equipment is kept. The oxygen tank is in this pouch here. It's very heavy, so when you flop it open, it's going to hit the ground hard, so just be careful with that. The oxygen, oxygen tank is in this pouch. This pouch here contains everything else needed for the oxygen. So we have the regulator is in here, along with an ambi bag. And a couple oxygen masks are in here as well. And of course the wrench for the regulator is attached to the regulator. So if the person is having any respiratory issues at all, or if they're shocky, oxygen should be administered. And it's on the outside of the pack, so it's easy to get to it. On the main compartment of the pack, open it up wide. On this part of the pack are three pouches that are velcro on, so you can actually rip them off and take them uh, past the whole pouch if you want. This one here is our medication, so naloxone for narcotic overdose, there's also epinephrine in here, some painkillers, aspirin, uh, and some syringes of course for the epinephrine. And there also is uh, some tubes of some energy gel in there. The next pouch is our bandage material, just band-aid type bandages. And then this pouch up here has equipment in it, so our pulse oximeter, uh, stuff for taking blood pressure, stethoscope, uh, some tongue depressors, and, that, and scissors, that sort of stuff is in here. And in the main compartment of the pack, we have a ready heat blanket. If the subject is all hypothermic, we're going to want to have this blanket taken out well ahead of time and uh, it needs to be shaken out and exposed to the oxygen to start activate itself so it can generate heat. And so if, if, the, uh, if the first aider is requesting red heat, this needs to actually come out about five minutes ahead of time and get it activated. Speaking of that sort of thing, we also have a little, uh, another kit here, uh, some hypothermia stuff. There's a space blanket or two in here and some energy gel. As you all know, get some energy into the person and they can create some of their own heat. Now, there's a bit of a pouch in the bottom part of this pack, and in that pouch is uh, our uh, wound uh, cleaning and disinfection supplies. So we have some garbage bags for some contaminated material to be disposed of. This bag here contains 
some large syringes for flushing with, some Q-tips and toothbrushes. All those things are in this bag here. Uh, the tweezers that you'd be looking for are back in this equipment pouch. So for flushing, uh, those are, we have that equipment there. We also have some chlorhexidine soap for washing around the wound. And we have some betadine solution to add to uh, water uh, if you didn't happen to have uh, enough sterile saline around. And speaking of sterile saline, there are two liters of sterile saline in the bottom of this pouch. Alcohol swabs and some more garbage bags just for keeping things clean and tidy around uh, the area. And some more spray type um, wash for, uh, for abrasions and that sort of thing. So all of these uh, cleaning and um, wound flushing products you'll find in the bottom part of this pack. I'm just going to put some of these things away so that we don't get too many things out at the same time. Now, in the other part of the pack, we are going to have all of our bandage material. So, primary wound layer, so talpa pads, some sterile gauze is in there, and that sort of thing for going directly on top of a wound once the wound is cleaned and prepped. And and then we also have abdominal pads, um, so secondary, secondary layer type stuff. And so and there's some gauze in there as well. And this pouch here con contains wraps, so your final or your tertiary layer. There's scissors in here for cutting the bandage with. There's a white adhesive tape in here, vet wrap, and some other compress type wraps to go around the outside. And we also have one more kit that has tensor bandages for going on the outside, as well as a number of triangular bandages um, to be used for various things. Uh, we have three different types of, uh, three different splints, uh, sand splints and so forth. They're all in here, as is uh, Elizabethan collar. And we do have some mole skin in here as well. Um, this black thing is our cat tourniquet, so combat application tourniquet, and we practice with that. It's in here as well, and as well as some more gauze, vacuum packed, and a vacuum packed hypothermia uh, sleeping bag. So it is like a sleeping bag, but it's all packaged in that little tiny package. We have some zap ties in here. And of course, these are used for securing various things, whatever your imagination decides. Uh, if we want to do a pelvic binding using the triangular bandages, then we can use these to secure the edges, edges of that uh, triangular bandage. Now, we will be uh, adding to this kit a, a proper um, pelvic binder, a sound pelvic binder, so that will be added to this kit over the next few weeks. It will be in this main compartment. And also in here, we have some nasal cannulas for uh, establishing a, a, an airway via the nasal passage and just a couple of coal packs. Uh, if we have strains and strains and want to ice them then we can use those coal packs. So that is our, our kit and uh, yeah as I say everybody in the team should have some familiarity with where things are kept in this kit so you can be of uh, use to the first aid uh, attendant uh, when we uh, have first aid issues with our subject. Thank you.